don't use the Shopify. <laughs> What's up guys, Thaddeus here, hope you guys are having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Shopify hold and how to actually avoid it. There's a few different ways you actually avoid it, um, depending on you know whether or not your store is live, whether it's already live, and um, how to go about doing that, okay? Because Shopify does place this hold, especially for dropshippers, just to kind of save Shopify's butt. Um, in the case that there are chargebacks, just because dropshipping tends to have a higher chargeback rate than um, other other methods of e-commerce, simply because usually um, because of the shipping times, right? So because mo most people are shipping from AliExpress, most suppliers are in mainland China, all over the world, right? So that that oftentimes leads to a little bit of a lengthier shipping time, which includes um, a slight increase in chargeback rates, um, especially if you're not managing your your customers. Well, right, okay, so now there, there's two ways to kind of go about doing this. I'm actually gonna walk you guys through um, a few a few different uh, methods, but before we get into that, guys, leave a like if you guys enjoy. I do love you guys' support, and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, there's a free wait list um, to join the zero to 1K challenge where me and my buddy Sebastian, who's also on YouTube, are gonna walk you guys through um, we're taking a store from zero to 1,000 and then to 10,000 and then to 50,000 in sales. Um, it's a complete documentary just to show you guys to do that. Okay, now that's my plug. Now, um, to actually go about doing this one, if you have your store already live, it's gonna be a bit more challenging to even do and it may not even work. But guys, um, the other way to do it is if your store is not live and that is a surefire way to actually av completely avoid the hold. And with dropshipping guys, you know you guys can start stores literally in a day once you guys know the process. And then so um, either way, this video should help you guys somewhat down the road in dropshipping. Now, the first way to do this, if your store is already live, if you already have a store, um, the main reason Shopify like initiates the hold, right, or places the hold on you is because they detect that you're importing products from Oberlo, like the main app to, to dropship, right, into your site, right? So when Shopify's back end, right, when they see that you are importing a product from or below into the store and that's all your products are, they're all just imported from or below into your store, then they can recognize that, hey, this client, this customer, um, this this business owner, right, is, is dropshipping products from, from China, right? There's nothing wrong with it, but that's how they kind of get alerted to basically know like, hey, this guy's dropshipping, we need to put a hold on him so we can kind of monitor their chargeback rate and you know be, be safe on our ends, okay? So that's how they can tell. Now, how do you go about avoiding the hold? Well, one, if you already have the hold on, um, you, you can't you can't remove it. That's just that's just gonna be there. But if you don't have it yet, um, you're fortunate enough to not get slammed with it yet, and you've already imported a lot of products in Oberlo. The one trick I used, guys, to actually avoid that, right, is I made a lot of spare random products, okay, that weren't imported from Oberlo. So I would just go to Shopify, click you know add new product, and then basically fill it out, set my inventory as to sold out, like zero left and then save a bunch, okay? Now, Shopify's kind of tactic, right? I've, I've heard they've changed this over time. Basically, if 50% of your products are not imported, like over 50% of your products are not imported via Oberlo, then they avoid the hold on you, okay? So basically, like, if you have 10 products on your store that import from Oberlo, then import 11 products, right? You're not import, but create 11 new products that are not visible to your customers and that are just all sold out, but just create the product itself, okay? So then in Shopify's backend, they see that you have 21 products, only 10 are imported from Oberlo, then they can say okay this guy's you know he's not drop shipping everything he needs the money to actually you know do stuff with it right so that is one way to avoid the hold guys if you already have a store live and haven't been hit with the hold yet now the next way to just completely avoid the hold right was i'm sure a lot of you guys are waiting for is first of all like why do you get the hold right the reason you're getting a hold is one you're using shopify payments right that's shopify's main payment gateway or payment like processor which is what most people use right so that's that's shopify's in-house payment processor okay so that's their thing they slap you with the hold because that's their that's their payment processor that they're trying to protect in case you know all these chargebacks come through okay so that's the main reason you get hit with it okay some people get hit with it when they switch to stripe and stuff like that but the way to actually avoid all this, guys, is you don't use Stripe and you don't use the Shopify payments plan, okay? So basically what that means is you're gonna use a third-party payment processor. Again, it's super easy to integrate in Shopify. They literally allow you to do this. All you do is switch from your Shopify payments into um, a third-party one. And the one that I recommend, guys, is actually called authorize.net, okay? So, I'm so guys, with authorize.net, right? So it's different from Stripe, it's different from Shopify payments. They all do the same thing, right? So when someone enters the credit card information, actually like, tries to purchase a product, it's gonna go through authorized.net instead of Shopify Pants or Stripe, right? The customer doesn't see any of that, they don't know that, um, but that's just the back end of like, who's like, kind of like processing the money and authorizing it and then sending it to you, okay? So with authorized.net, it's a little bit different 
um, in terms of how it's how it's like the fees and stuff like that. So one, there is a monthly fee. I believe it's forty nine dollars a month or thirty nine. Uh, somewhere around there, right? With Shopify, Stripe, that stuff, that, like, it's free right away. But the reason why I use authorized.net for some stores, right, is they allow a higher chargeback, right? right? With Stripe, it's 1%. With Shopify payments, I believe it's 1% or 2%, okay? So even with that, like, if you have 100 orders and you get two chargebacks, they're gonna they're gonna slap you with a hold or like with with some sort of reserve, right? So with authorized.net, they're a lot more lenient in the terms of how many chargebacks you can get, um, as terms of like a percent, right? So again, with authorized.net, you're paying a monthly fee, forty nine dollars. I believe there's like a twenty five dollars setup fee or something like that. But either way, there's a small setup fee, a monthly fee, and then they just take the standard, you know, two point nine percent off of every transaction, which is the same thing or essentially the same thing as the Shopify plan and Stripe, right? So they both take two point nine percent. I know Shopify, depending on your plan, they do. A little bit less but that's the gist of it guys um, again like a lot of you guys especially if you're just starting out right that 2.9% transaction fee versus you know Shopify like on the highest plan it goes like 2.4 something like that but um, that's not really gonna make a big difference unless you're doing like high 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 volume um, so most of you guys starting off with the hold or getting hit with the hold don't necessarily need to worry about that quite yet so that's that's literally just how to avoid it guys is because the hold is only slapped because you're using stripe or shopify payments right because shopify payments is basically like a child company of stripe okay it's all processed through stripe and stripe is the one that hits you with that okay so if you can avoid stripe you avoid the payment okay you, you avoid the hold so to avoid that again guys um, you know you can use any of the third-party providers, I just know authorized.net has a higher, um, you know, leniency level towards chargebacks, guys. So that's that's literally a super quick video. I just get a lot of questions of people asking me, hey, how can I avoid this? You know, I got my first order, but I don't have money now, to, you know, like to order this from my suppliers, blah, blah, blah. Like, guys, there's, there's workarounds around it. Um, so again, even if you do have the hold, feel free to, you know, switch payment providers. Um, again, it, it takes a little bit of setup, it takes a little bit of work, but the payoff can be worth it. You get a lot more money um, more frequently, right? And one thing to note, guys, with Shopify payments, um, you know, every deposit, it's um, like three days or something like that, but with authorized.net, it's every week, so every seven days. Okay, so it's a little bit lengthier, all right? But again, that's to account for possible chargebacks, okay? So again, they're not holding 25%, but they're just, their payouts are just a little bit more delayed in a sense, okay? So that's the video, guys. I just hope I answered some of you guys' questions because I get that a lot. Literally, a lot of my DMs are just flooded with that. Um, do leave a like. I love your guys' support when you guys show it. Um, you know, don't forget to comment. I respond to everybody's comments. And don't forget to subscribe, guys. We're doing a video a day. I hope you guys enjoy the content. I want to start branching off to like a little more like like lifestyle or personal, like about me. I don't know if you guys even care about me, um, but I care about me, so I want to post some stuff about me. Um, and um, shoot, what else I was going to say? Uh, uh, mm, yeah, that's the video, guys. Um, I want to do a video of one, reviewing some subscriber stores. So if you guys want, feel free to email or DM me on Instagram, your stores. Um, feel free to also ask me questions in the DM. I might just answer your guys' questions, just like, you know, like like shotgun um, a bunch of questions out from my Instagram DMs and answer just everyone's questions so I can hopefully um, help a lot of people out there. And uh, yeah, guys, that's the video. Join the wait list. The link is down in the description, guys. It's gonna be crazy. Um, you know, hop in the course as well if you guys are interested. That is closing very soon. Um, there's a lot of stuff planned for you guys. I literally, I partnered with a company that actually makes custom content. Like the photographers that I use personally for my sites uh, literally are behind this, this, this program, I guess you could say. So a lot of you guys who are asking like, hey, where can I get custom content? I don't know how to talk to photographers or find photographers, blah, blah, blah. Like I got you guys, right? That's literally like, I'm trying to help you guys. And I finally found something. I'm working on that. I'm working on a bunch of stuff behind the scenes to make things happen for you guys just to get you know results for everyone so i'm super excited about that uh, but yeah guys i will see you guys in the next one i hope you guys are enjoying the new mic quality too by the way i uh oh you'll see that there's there's a mic right above me you didn't see that did you Ooh. but yeah i hope you guys enjoy the quality and i will see you guys in the next one take care and peace and last but not least don't forget to check out my social media and follow me for updates giveaways and literally everything that's cool